when we think about what truth is, a lot of what we are thinking is shaped, whether we're aware of it or not, by Rene Descartes, who was a philosopher in the 1600s, and you've probably heard this saying, I think, therefore I am. He was trying to figure out what is it to be alive? How do I even know that I exist? Oh, I'm, th I'm sitting here thinking this thought, so I must exist. And so much has grown from that where we have come then to value objectivity so highly and to value our own intellect so highly that it's actually done a lot of damage to us as human beings, and that has then influenced our faith as well. It's meant that we, and of course, our intellect is an incredible gift from God. I love thinking, I love reading, but at the same time, it's only a part of who we are. We are also embodied beings, right? We have spirits, we have emotions, we have senses, we have instincts, and as a part of this whole I think, therefore I am thing that we're a part of, Somehow we've compartmentalized all those pieces of ourselves and we've made a kind of a hierarchy that thinking is up here, feeling is somewhere down here, instinct is even further lower than that because it just kind of, we can't even put it into words. Have you ever noticed how often when somebody cries, the first thing they say is, I'm sorry? Like we're ashamed of this part of ourselves. And so it does real damage to us. It breaks us into different pieces and it's come into our faith as well so that we feel that to, to have truth is to have information, to have concepts, to have arguments, to have doctrines. And so it's made our faith in Western culture into a thing that if we don't really understand God, then we mustn't believe. And it's, it's sidelined all the other ways that God wants to communicate to us. He's given us bodies and emotions and senses and relationships and nature to just bombard us constantly with his truth. And yet we're only, it's like, I mean, there's a lot of radio people here and I'm probably not going to use this metaphor well, but it's like he's broadcasting in a million different channels and we're just tuning in, in one very narrow way. Is that a good use of the metaphor of broadcasting? I don't know, but... Yeah, I think you know what I'm saying here. So, so no wonder we have ourselves in a place now in contemporary Western Christianity where there's just a lot of doubt and we're left feeling really dry because God is a mystery and our minds will never comprehend. And so what a beautiful thing. God, throughout all of the story of the people of Israel, gave them words. He himself wrote words in their language on stone tablets, but when he really wanted them to know truth, he came in a human body. And he walked among us and he talked to us and he did miracles and he touched people and he ate with people. That's when truth really became apparent. Truth became flesh. Word took on flesh and dwelt among us. And now he promises us that that spirit that was in that one human body of Jesus has now been given to each of us. Truth can be embodied. Truth can be embodied in him, and truth can be embodied in us. And so what healing might be possible if we took the risk to trust that, yes, our intellects are wonderful. We should study history. We should understand theology. We should get our heads around this as much as possible, but we're only going to be able to understand a little bit that way. And how can we open ourselves up to the possibility that our instincts are singing out with the truth of God, that our emotions, that our hearts are burning, that in eating together and communing with one another, experiencing sensory experiences, walking on the beach, we are being bombarded constantly with the story of God, with the truth of God that, that is so much more than a statement that can be put into words.